Carter, Master Detective. This is the story of a man known the world over as one of the most daring and resourceful characters in the history of detective fiction. A man whose name has become a symbol of the triumph of right and justice over the sinister forces of crime and lawlessness. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Today's exciting case, Nick's search for the murderer who placed Adolf Hitler's brand on the jaw of a dead man. The body in the ice. There are many strange customs throughout the world, but perhaps the strangest is that of the Arctic Club. You've seen the Arctic Club in action in movies, newspapers, and magazines. In the dead of winter, the members don bathing suits and go for a swim. This morning, with the mercury hovering around ten above zero, a shivering group of newspaper men gathers on the snow-crusted beach to report the strange activities of the Arctic Club. Okay, okay, just a few more minutes, folks. I will line up some more pictures. Right over. 
It sounds like a practical joke to me. Me too. One of the reasons why it came out. And now you're accusing Waldo of planning a body. It doesn't make sense. Another reason for this trip. Oh, look at all those men in bathing suits. Oh, that's Walter. He's talking to Matt. Hey, close that door. You want to give us all the warning? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know we got to turn around. You're not... Oh, we're so close. Oh, Nick. Nick, boy, you, you don't know how glad I am to see you. Hello, Walter. Hello, Matty. Hello, oh, Nick. Hiya, Patsy. Hello. Hey, what's wrong with about Walter planning a course? You're not serious about using water, though. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's a demonstration of the stupidity of the mind of poverty. I'm being framed to solve the case which, if I were done, I could clear up in 24 hours. All right, all right, Waldo. Well, you and the rest can get dressed and go on home. You're in the clear. Yeah, you're in the clear, Buffalo Bill. Why? You, you think I'd keep you hanging around here making phone calls if I really thought you were mixed up in this? Huh? I just wanted to get Nick out here. Why, you talk? I don't mind. Never mind. I was afraid of that. Why, Sergeant? That's practically blackmail. Look, Patsy, I blackmail my own grandmother to get Nick out of this case. It's a stinker. Come on out to the beach and take a look at the body. Nick. Are we going to let Maddie push us into this case? Oh, now, Pat, please. Well, Maddie's just around here. Might as well take a look. We'll be on our credit list the next time we have a run-in with Maddie's red tape. <laughs> This is it, Nick. We just hauled it a little way up onto the beach. And this is the body right now. Throat and solid and a chunk of ground ice. What kind of ice? Ground ice. Also known as anchor ice. You can tell because it's granular, of course. Oh. See, in especially cold weather, ice sometimes forms in the bottom of the sea. It becomes thick enough to throw it large objects to the surface. For instance, sometimes ships that have been anchored have had their anchors float to the surface and have drifted for miles. You, you, you mean that's what happened to this guy? I do. His body was lying on the ocean bottom. Held down by that weight around his waist. What's Nick? That means he was murdered. Yes, of course it does. While he was on the bottom, ground ice formed and finally buoyed him up. What do you know? Now let's have that big ice, Matty. Yes. We'll crack all the ice we can off the body and melt the rest off so we can just see what happens. All right, here you are, Nick. Thanks. It'll be a long job, but it's going to be done. <laughs> Your body. Clear enough now of what happened. Yeah, I'll say. Hey, would you look at the right side of that guy's head? He smashed in. Yeah. Death must have been instantaneous. <laughs> Entire temporal lobe smashed. <laughs> You're broken too. Yeah, it must, must have been, been quite a fight. I don't know you like that. Ah, what's this? Fight it, Nick. Bruise in the side of his chin. Oh, naturally, he must have been slugged there if his jaw was broken. And for take a close look at that bruise. Hmm? Huh? Yeah, he's a get that. That's what it is. Why? Huh? Evidently the impression of a ring. Matty, will you tell me who wears a Nazi ring in this country? Um, well, well, may, uh, maybe an ex-soldier, uh, uh, civilian. Yeah, possibly. That's right. Just touching it. Oh, that doesn't seem to be any identification, honey. Now, what? Here's something caught in his coat sleeve. Huh? It's a piece of rotten wood with a nail in it. Probably came off the ocean bottom with him. Looks like the slat of a lobster pot to me. Ah, this is luck. Hey, there's letters on it. Yeah, it's burned on pretty crudely. I think the fisherman is marking his lobster pot. Let's see. That's an E. E. That's an L. L, yeah. Last two letters of the name. Then, C, E, L. Mm -hmm. G, mm -hmm. C, C. Yeah, C. R. Can't make out the rest. No. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Belgrade, small town about 30 miles up the coast. You mean this coast stretches 30 miles? I do. All right, Matty. There are your facts. An unidentified man was killed in the fight by someone wearing a Nazi ring. He was weighted down and dumped into the sea near Belgrade. Ground ice floated him up and down here. Now, your case? Come on, Patsy. Yep. Oh, now, look, Nick, you're, you're not walking out on me. Believe me, we'll get smashed. I certainly am. But, but it's murder, Nick. You can't just go home. I can't who said anything about going home. Patsy and I are going up to Belgrade to find out who wears Nazi rings. <laughs> In the place, mister. I'm Nick Carter. This is Miss Patsy Bowen, my secretary. Carter? I don't know as though I recollect the name. We've ever met. I'm a detective. 
I'd like to ask you some questions. About what? I think someone may be missing from Belgrade, and I think I have found him. I'm listening. Short man, blonde. Weight about 130. Blue eyes. Ankle and nose. Large ears. Heavy lips. You found him? Yes, Charlie Howell. Where is he? And the police more dead. Dead, eh? Murdered. Murdered, eh? <laughs> Too bad. They wondered what happened to him. Who was he, Mr. Bland? The assistant in my store. At Bennett's grocery store. You can't support yourself on a share of in Belgrade. How long has Howell been missing, Mr. Bland? About two weeks. I thought he was out on a binge. They sent him out Friday night to make deliveries in the truck. He never showed up Saturday. Did the truck? Yeah. I guess he brought it back to the garage before he went, well, wherever he went. Did it ever occur to you that the killer might have brought it back? No. Never occurred to me Charlie was killed. He's been on fast before. Anyone complain about non delivery groceries that day? No. Well, there's a chance Howell was killed after he finished work. There's an equal chance he was killed on the shot. I have a list of Howell's delivery schedule for that Friday. Don't see why you should. But, Mr. Glennon, this is a murder case. Sure you want to have... Now, look here, ma'am, and you too, Mr. Parker. My name is Carter, Nick Carter. Carter. Well, as far as I'm concerned... Say, would you be any relation to old Sim Carter who broke the New England bank case? He was my father. Your father, eh? Well, well, why didn't you say so before? Oh, glad to meet you, Carter. Shake. Well, (laughs) your father was a great detective. You want Charlie's delivery schedule? Well, you get it. You get anything we've got in this town. Oh. Well, thanks. For a while, I thought all I was going to get was a cold shoulder. It's getting dark, Nick. Yeah. I think it's time to snow. Maybe. How many more stops do we have to make? Oh, the schedule for 11 deliveries last Friday. We've covered nine. Well, what's left? I only by the name of Kane and that shooting club. Oh, you think Belgrade would have a shooting club? But the tiny little town doesn't look like a resort. I should have said X shooting club. Our business is X. Just hanging out. Oh. Brennan said he very rarely sent anything out there. You think Howell might have been killed at one of these last two places? I don't know. We found out he made the other two, the other nine deliveries in prison. Made these last two out of blind alley. Someone might be lying. And the question is who? Mm. We don't know what route Howard took. Still, it was mine. Might have been the last. That name Kane sounds suspicious. Wasn't Kane the original murderer? Uh, I'm afraid about that reason, Captain. Wait a minute, We're going into a trap! <laughs> Someone who doesn't want the Howell case followed. I nominate the killer off hand. The guy with the swipe of the ring? Do you think we went back and located him? I doubt it. I've already gone. Too dark to look for him. Not enough snow on the ground to break foot there. It's wrong. Where to? In the first warm house we find. It's going to be a freezing night. We can't sit here on our lonely back road with two flat tires and wait for help. Hey, yes. look down the road. A little to the left. I think I can see a light. Huh? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, I see it. Now, that's where we're headed when we crash the shooting club. Well, we're going to make it half an hour. Half an hour in this storm? Oh, oh I wish Waldo were here. Waldo and his Arctic club. He got us into this. Looking grim. Why, too? Uh, that's not so. Uh, 
Pardon me, I'm the car. This is my secretary, Patsy Bowen. Our car parked up outside in the park. You didn't even notice him. You just walked by. Will one of you gentlemen be good enough to answer? Please, gentlemen. If this is a joke, we're not having any. Will you please answer? Will you at least indicate that you're alive? Will you say something? Anything! Madam, don't shout. Oh, you are the boys in the silence. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you come in. I was in the rear of the club. But my name is Adam, secretary of the organization. You're the famous Nick Carter, aren't you? Yes, my two pictures. And this lady, that's wrong, my secretary. What kind of a club is this, Mr. Adams? Why does everyone ignore us? It's something of a paradox, Mr. Owen. It's a new idea, recently formulated. This is a club for anti-social men. Anti-social, huh? Well, it formed a club, precisely. All our members are men who desire the sporting advantages of the club, but hated the social drawbacks. They formed this organization for that purpose. There's a strict club rule against all conversations, laughter, entertainment, women. Well, I object to that. And I'm sorry to say against visitors. Well, I shall have to ask you to leave, Mr. Carter. But dear Adams, I came here to ask you some questions. If you will make an appointment for tomorrow, I shall be happy to meet you in Belgrade. You must leave now. But can you at least lend us a car? Or is it smashed? Sorry. There is a telephone for help? There is no telephone. This way out. <laughs> what a mean thing. I'm sure you understand my decision. Good night, Mr. Carter and Miss Bowen. This doesn't mean anything I've ever heard of. Oh. What do we do now? Walk. Come on. We have to dance. No, we won't. Look up there. Up where? At the corner of the clubhouse. Are those telephone wires? They are. And a hunch Adam was lying about the phone. I know he was lying about the rest. Quick now. Let it up around the back of the house. Oh, Nick, what are you talking about? Harold Murders was killed here. Uh, how do you know? One of those so-called anti-social club members was wearing a swastika ring. Are you sure? There was a man with a shooting jacket who passed that. Oh, yeah. now. This looks like the back door that leads into the clubhouse now. Why that story about anti-social men? To cover the fact that the man was strong and speaking the Why can't they speak English? Because they're Nazis. Probably escaped D.W. Friends of the war. I congratulate you, Mr. Carter. Take that, Adam. Don't go. Please raise your hands. I assume you're on, Mr. Carter. If you reach the gun, I shall shoot the girl. Our hands are up, Adam. Take that flashlight out of our eyes. Your deductions were correct. I had very little hope that my hastily concocted story would fool you. That's why I waited here for your second visit. Thanks for the hospitality. I had hoped you would be killed in the crash when I shut out your tires. It's unfortunate you are not. I don't think so. But I do, Miss Bowen. You see, I'm afraid I shall have to kill both of you all over again. <laughs> Right out, Nick. What time is it? Six o'clock. We've been locked up here all night. What's the idea? Adam said he was going to kill us, didn't he? Yeah. So why what he, what is this? For fine Nazi torture? I don't know. Oh, Nick. Isn't there some way out of this mess? Probably. Just gotta find it. Close the door. I think there's a dead thing. Please remain seated. Many years' experience has taught me how to carry a loaded tray in one hand. So convenient when one would carry a loaded gun in the other. There we are. Breakfast. Thanks. We're not hungry. I assure you, the food is not poison. Look here, Adam. What's the game you're playing? You've got threatening murder. Why delay? We're in an extraordinary position, Mr. Carter. As you've already guessed, this is a depot for escaped prisoners of war. Go on. An intense debate is in progress downstairs. The city is divided. One school of thought advocates your death immediately. Yes. A spirited opposition wishes to use you as hostages to ensure safe transport back to the mother country. You haven't made up your minds yet? Not yet. I'm going down now. I shall presently return with the final verdict. In the meantime, I would suggest you have breakfast. Thanks. There's only one thing wrong with this meal, Adams. No cigarettes. <laughs> Very well. You may have my thanks. Yes. Thank you. Uh, be sure to save the last two for the execution. Thank you, Ed. 
reinforcements we need, Patsy. Adams Club members are really going to be antisocial from now on. Back in a prisoner of war camp. Sorry you won't borrow a car to get home, Mr. Carter. It don't seem right letting old Sim Carter's son take the train. Well, that's quite all right, Lennon. Thanks, anyway, for the offer. Mighty nice of you giving me all the credit for grabbing that gang of PWs. Oh, you deserve it. And you've got your whole case closed. Charlie Howell evidently heard some of the Nazi gab when he was taking his last delivery to the club. Got suspicious and sleuth before he drove away. Then was discovered, put up a fight, and was killed. Adams dumped his body in Belgrade Bay when he drove the truck back to the garage. But what about Adams shooting at our contest? How do you know we were coming? Well, Patsy Adams must have been in Mr. Glennon's grocery store when we were going over Howell's delivery schedule. Uh -huh. He realized we were on the trail and tried to stop us. Well, he sure didn't, Mr. Carter. And you sure put the sheriff of Belgrade on the map. Well, as far as that goes, Patsy and I might have been off the map permanently. You hadn't answered by SOS the instant the phone company reported it. Well, what happened back at the country club? How did you get away from Adams? Oh, that. Why, Patsy was the one who put Adams out of the way. By smoking 11 cigarettes in half an hour. <laughs> oh, that don't make sense, Nick. Well, it was an old trick my father taught me. I took the ashes from the cigarettes Patsy smoked and packed them into an empty paper cigarette tube. And then when I pretended to start smoking my last execution cigarette, I simply blew the ashes directly into Adam's eyes. That blinded him so I could take his gun away and knock him out. So that was it. What a boss to work for, Sheriff Lennon. A trick in every pocket and a hundred up his sleeve. Mr. Carter, I got an apology to make to you. I once said you were the son of the famous Sim Carter. Well, I take it back. Jim Carter's the father of the famous Nick Carter. Well, Nick, how about a little preview of next week's story?